there's this really unfortunate thing that happens when someone has been raised by a narcissistic person and has lived the life of having to survive their family, really, and their upbringing. And a lot of the time they have had to go inside themselves to stay safe. So as a child, maybe you had to retreat back into your own mind and your own fantasy life to create something that feels safe and something that feels like it's protecting you and some some sort of fantasy or some sort of like basically go into your happy place while your outside world with your parents is a toxic, scary place. When you know children should have the experience of safety and security and warmth and love and all of that from their parents, but when they're not receiving it and you have to retreat back into your own mind, into your own fantasy to stay safe and to have a happy place, there are some wires that get mixed together in your brain. They should not be crossed. There's something that happens that mixes the good and the bad together so that later in your life, when you are having an adult experience of happiness or joy, you're either waiting for the other shoe to drop and for things to get really bad. You don't trust the good times or what feels happy and right. You're not able to experience the happiness because there's a looming threat behind it of something toxic. Is this familiar to you? My name is Lise Colucci and I am here to help you understand and heal from narcissistic toxic relationships in your life. So just let me start off. If you need any help with anything or any coaching, group coaching or peer support, there's information in the description of every video. Check it out because there's lots of ways to get help there, okay? So let's keep going. So what happens when you're a child and you have experienced somebody being very toxic to you? Say you're a scapegoat. We'll just take that as an example. So you're being scapegoated. You're being told you're wrong. You're always the one that is bad in the family or has to take the blame for everything in your family, okay? And inside yourself, sometimes the only way to take it is to check out, right? Like to disassociate from what's happening in the moment. And a lot of people use fantasy to disassociate. So a lot of people have told me, yeah, as a child, I had this happy place I went to, or I would just drift away and think about things that I loved and like try to keep myself feeling protected and safe. Or later on at night, you know, I would lay in bed and um, play with my stuffed animals and, and act out little scenes of happiness between them so that I would feel better, okay? This self-soothing, this self-help that you're giving yourself as a child, super useful, very intelligent, and, you know, it creates resilience, right? It allows you to keep going within your family because you have no choice as a child. But see, what starts to happen is that becomes where anytime anything bad is happening and, and you retreat into there, the association is made that good and bad equal the same thing. That when there is bad, we have to retreat to good, which means to our minds that when there is good, the bad is somewhere lurking. This happens to so many people. This is like such a common thing people come to coaching for to help them break free from this because what a way to live, right? When you can never experience the joyful moments of your life because you're always waiting for something bad to happen. So, I mean, there's a couple obvious things I can say here to help with this. And super obvious, but sometimes it helps to hear it. Life is full of ups and downs, right? Everybody's life has the ups and downs. The other shoe will drop, <laughs> okay? I'm not here to say everything's going to be good forever. I mean, if you wait long enough, the bad will come, right? And the good will come. So, it, But seeing that isn't enough. Knowing that... Of course, everybody experiences good things and bad things, of course, even if it's only for a moment, even if you're saying, I don't get much good. Well, maybe the sun shined on your face and it was lovely for five seconds, right? And of course, the bad comes for people. And yes, some people do have more share than they deserve of the bad. But the point is, if you can't feel, experience, or be able to like embody the good times without the threat of that looming badness and the horrible things that could come, the fear, the anxiety, then there's something within the system that's been set up because of the way you were raised that is possibly creating this. Truly a lot of the things people teach in healing from this. And what is effective is to learn to be in the moment, to learning to be present to the moment so that we're not drifting into the disassociative mind-wandering fantasy brain to keep you safe, 
or into projecting the fears that you have about the past onto the future, staying right in the moment. But how do you do that? There's all kinds of techniques. There's mindfulness, there's meditation, there's exercise, there's yoga, there's breathing techniques. There are all kinds of psychological techniques to help you center and ground and stay focused. Another thing is gratitude. Having an attitude that is filled with gratitude does help even the most difficult situations, okay? Is it going to make it better so no bad comes? Absolutely not. But what it's going to do is allow you the moments that you have of joy, of happiness, of relief, of relaxation in your life so that you can be present to that, okay? And it allows you to notice it and then reflect upon it. That's the important part. We reflect upon the bad things like probably a thousand times more than we reflect upon the good things because the fear, the pain, the anxiety, and all of that is screaming at you to don't look away because if you look away, something bad might happen, right? But what if we lean in toward gratitude? What if leaning in toward gratitude toward things allows you to amplify that in your life? It's just a question and it is worth trying. I mean, being afraid of the good, being afraid or maybe afraid is the wrong word. Maybe it's not trusting the good and not trusting the positive things in life is very normal after being raised by toxic people. One of the ways I like to work with this with people is through internal family systems or IFS parts work. And that is because this is a classic example of how the parts were put into place, how the parts of you that developed to protect you, how your moods, your personalities, your behaviors, your parts were formed from the bad experiences. So you're creating these great defenders, which is the fantasy mind, right? That then links back to this toxic thing that happens so that it's always in play. So part of internal family system says, separate the two, break it down, look at each piece individually and start having conversations from that place. Finding self, you're in there, you guys, the true self that has the ability to experience joy and the ability to be calm and present is separate